Hello everyone from Houston, Texas, home of Rice University, among other august institutions. Today I just wanted to spend a few minutes sharing some mementos that I've acquired over the years related to my favorite university, Rice. I wanted to sort of go in chronological order today from oldest item to newest item, so I thought we'd start with two editions of the Campanile, which is Rice's yearbook named after the bell tower on the engineering quad. Now, Rice opened its doors in 1912, and these two particular editions are from 1921 and 1927. So that's nine and 15 years, respectively, after the opening of the university. So I'm just going to flip through this original edition of the Campanile from 1921, and perhaps we'll get a sense of life at the university, at the institute, is what it was called at the time, in its very early days. And I'll do the same with this yearbook, dated 1927. And as a bonus today, I just wanted to share a postcard that I found wedged in one of the pages in the yearbook. And uh, this features what was called the administration building at the time. It's now called Lovett Hall. It's the, the main building on campus and would have been uh, the one featured on postcards at the time. Now well, this card is postmarked. November 13th, 6.30 p.m., 1913, so that's one year 
into the academic life of Rice, and it is addressed to someone named Miss Annie Brown in Enterprise, Mississippi. It says, Houston is having a big celebration this week, some of the prettiest parades going, I believe is what it says. So this next very special item is a collection of bound Rice Thresher newspapers from 1962 to 1963. And the Rice Thresher is of course Rice's student newspaper and remains so to this day. This particular volume has Kenneth Sanborn Pitzer's name embossed on the front. K.S. Pitzer, he was the president of the university at the time. So I'm just going to open this and we can take a look at one or two of the articles within these editions. Um, let's see, the first one is dated Wednesday, September 19th, 1962, which is Rice's semi-centennial year. Remember, Rice opened its doors in 1912. And Oddly enough, this first article at the top addresses the visit of President John F. Kennedy and his famous To the Moon speech, which occurred on September 12, 1962 at Rice Stadium. This is the famous speech in which uh, JFK declared the goal of the United States to reach the moon within the decade. Uh, this is the one in which he asks, why does Rice play Texas? He, towards the end of his speech, uh, begins speaking of the reasons that mankind strives to do the hardest things, not the easiest ones. He asks, uh, why go to the moon? Why choose this as our goal? And they may ask, why climb the highest mountain? Why, 35 years ago, fly the Atlantic? Why does Rice play Texas? We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Let's just take a look at some of the articles from 1963. And there appears to be a retrospective in photos from Kennedy's visit. He was accompanied by LBJ. And there's some articles covering the semi-centennial as well as coverage of sports at the time. And Rice was still a football power in the 1960s. Our next item is a book entitled Rice University, a 75th Anniversary Portrait. And so this was published in 1987, 75 years after the 1912 opening of the university. And it was published by a uh, fellow named um, Jeff Winningham. And he actually signed this edition. And uh, he is uh, uh, the preeminent photographer of the uh, campus and is featured in many books and publications. Uh, the book starts with some photos of the campus in its early days and then gets to some of Winningham's photos. There's uh, Steve Baker there in the physics lecture hall of uh, student life and uh, professorial life in the late 80s. But what makes this book particularly unique is that this particular one is signed by George Rupp, who was the president who preceded uh, Malcolm Gillis. He was the first uh, president of Rice not to have had a 
science or engineering background. He had been um, a divinity school dean prior to coming to Rice, if I recall correctly. And he signs this book to Polly Mom with fond memories of our holidays together. Love, George and Nancy, Christmas 1987. For my last item of this video, I wanted to look back to the year 2003, which was a momentous one for Rice Owls Athletics, one in which the baseball team went all the way and won the national championship at the College World Series in Omaha, Nebraska. And um, this is uh, particularly important for me because uh, at the time of the College World Series, uh, which was in mid to late June of 2003, I was uh, hospitalized at the time. And I recall fondly, somewhat at least, watching these games from my hospital bed. And I recall them having lifted my spirits. So I have a, a couple of items um, that are basically in, in new condition. Um, that celebrated the national championship. Uh, a t-shirt here and a cap here. This was a, uh, an outstanding baseball team, some of the best pitchers of any college bas uh, baseball team in history. The team went 58-12 uh, and 12 after a 33-1 and one start, and uh, they defeated Stanford University 14-2 to two in uh, the championship game, which I believe was on June 23rd, 2003. Now the most important item here is a ring top on the national championship ring. So as you can see here, the ring says 2003 on the sides, national champion with the old English R. And on the back it says 58 wins. Well, thank you to everyone for joining. I hope you enjoyed this Rice retrospective as much as I did.